guys. There you go. All right, guys, let's go find this treasure. Let's do this. It's got to be around here. What's that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Watch it. You see this? Wait. Be careful. This place is in the minefield. Could it be gold? No way. What is it? That's man-made. Look at that thing. What is that? This is a ceremonial to me. Oh my god. This is a piece of the treasure of the Trinity. In the darkest corner of Paraguay lies a forbidden place where, for centuries, no one dared to go. It was once home to a Guarani tribe, but history says a massive treasure was brought there 500 years ago. And soon after, it became a place of murder and bloodshed. Legend has it the Guarani people believed the treasure brought evil upon them. So they abandoned the village, leaving the great fortune behind. Man, there's a lot of spiders in here. Yeah, they're everywhere. Hey, it's Megan. Megan. Oh, yeah. It's about time you showed up. Following the hunt on Snake Island nearly a year ago, the team needed time to regroup. Hey, Cap. Megan went back to her family in Colorado. Ship Captain Keith Cappy Plaskett got married. <laughs> Veteran treasure hunter Corb Graham began preparing for the next leg of the hunt. And treasure recovery expert Jeremy Whalen, still obsessed with the idea that the treasure was on Snake Island, made one final Hail Mary to find it. I heard a rumor you went back to Snake Island? Yeah. Man, that's risky. I think there's a lot more to this island than our first find. I know there's got to be more here. This looks pretty promising. This is a huge cave system. It goes way the hell back there. Nope. There's nothing below this. Right. Let's go. I've checked out all the GPS points, and I think I could definitely say there's no treasure on Snake Island. On Snake Island, it was just vipers. Where we're at now, you're talking about a thousand ways to die. So we brought in a new guy. The team has come together to pursue a fresh path to the treasure. And their newest member is survival expert and former US Airman, Brett Tudor, who has led high-risk expeditions in all parts of the globe. The team believes the carving they found on Snake Island a year ago points to a riverside location due west of the island. After months of poring over historical records, Cork and Jeremy are confident that place is where the treasure was last seen in its entirety. The ancient village of Arasi. So this is a marker for the Tumi. Oh, man. No way. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. Seeing the Tumi, you know, I get goosebumps, like my blood starts pumping. That's a huge find, huge. Wow. What do you think? This did not uh, originate in this area. I believe this is definitely Inca. This is Inca. Easy. The most iconic artifact of the Inca empire, the Tumi, is a ceremonial knife used during religious festivals to sacrifice animals for the Inca sun god, Inti, making it a truly sacred object for the Inca elite. What kind of metal is it? More than likely, it's a mixture of many different metals. And the green is the patina, so it's indicating there's copper or bronze or something like that okay. involved in the mixture. It's hard to put a date on it without you know, further investigation but I would say 500 plus years. In the 1500s, the most advanced and powerful civilization in all of South America is the Inca. Located in modern day Peru, 
The Inca Empire has long been envied by other indigenous groups on the continent, including the Guarani, who populate parts of modern-day Paraguay, Argentina, Bolivia, and Brazil. 1524, Northern Paraguay. Portuguese conquistador Alejo Garcia allies with 2,000 Guarani warriors and marches to raid the mighty Inca. Garcia is on the hunt for silver and gold, but the Guarani desires something else. A legendary talisman they believe has given the Inca godlike powers to create gravity-defying structures and death-defying remedies. Garcia and his men amass a vast fortune. But when they return to Paraguay, Garcia is suddenly ambushed and killed by his allies. According to Guarani oral history, they take hold of the treasure and hoard it all in one of their settlements by the Paraguay River. But whether the mystical object so desired by the Guarani is part of the massive fortune remains a mystery. Now they will investigate the site where, two weeks ago, their side-scanned sonar detected a possible man-made object, which could be a part of the treasure of the Trinity. Here we were flying along with a side-scan sonar. It's going along and we've got pretty much a plane of silt and mud going along and then suddenly we see these deviations. So you've got some stuff over here on this side. So when I see a deviation like that, I'm thinking there's gotta be something that's here. Five centuries of fast-moving river currents and torrential rainfall has caused dramatic erosion in the area. Old maps of the region make clear that nearly half the Guarani village that once sat by the Paraguay River has now fallen into it. And the treasure that was hoarded here may now be hiding, either in the topsoil right by the river's edge or underwater. Megan, I'm, I'm a little worried about you getting in the water. I mean, it's chocolate milk, you know, so there could be anything underneath there. Yeah, the visibility is going to be our first, you know, limitation. So Derek, our crew cameraman here, is going to be buddy diving with me. He'll be running the camera. So I think the best idea is probably to have us tethered together so we don't lose each other. You're going to be in a blind, totally in the blind. Yeah, that's why I was doing drills with tinfoil on my mask. <laughs> But down here, this is gonna be much worse. The other dangers in this water are gonna be the piranha and caiman. There's caimans that you know, have been known to attack people. There's the piranhas that we know for a fact have eaten people on this river. But what it really freaks me out about what she's gonna be dealing with is just the debris, which could be flying past with low visibility. Not a situation I didn't be anybody. I have spent a lot of time underwater with marine predators, but this is, this is intense. This is pushing my comfort zone. It it's nerve wracking, for sure. This part of South America is notorious for piranha attacks. Two years ago, 70 bathers were savaged by a school of piranhas, losing fingers, toes, and large chunks of flesh within seconds. In fact, these fish are so fierce that they can shred a thousand pound cow down to the bone in a matter of minutes. Megan, if we do see piranhas, yeah. I'm gonna chum out and away from you downstream a little bit to draw them away from you. Chum is a, a bloody mass of pig's blood and fish. We're gonna use that to actually direct anything in the water that's carnivorous away from Megan while she's diving. Is that ready? We're ready. Here we go. Com check, com check, this top side. Loud clear. Roger that. Oh man, I can't see any creek out here. This is, this is something else. So we just hit the bottom here, we're just gonna do a little skin. We got a lot of stuff down here, pretty muddy. There's a lot of debris down here. A lot of trees, branches. It's hard to get around. Did you see that? I just saw some fish, but I can't tell what they are. 
was that? Was that Megan? You okay, Megan? Megan, Megan. I just lost Megan. You broke? Right? See bubbles? Where's Megan at? I just lost the, the line just snapped. What happened? It just snapped. Brett, why did it snap? Come on, get, get the on. Zodiac. Where was she last, Derek? It was just right next to me. Megan, are you okay? This is top side. All right, guys, look for bubbles. Hey, look for bubbles. Look for bubbles. We're going to come. No, Jeremy, don't grab the chum. We don't know what it is yet. We'll draw the prawn if there's any prawn or anything going after this. We'll try it. Throw chum in, dude. Yeah, yeah. Here, 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 here. Help me, help me, help me. This is the best way. Emilio, go down. Yeah. Go down. See if you can. See bubbles over there. there. Bubbles over there, Brent. Is there a current? Bubbles here. Megan, Megan, are you OK? Get on. Top side. Oh. Go, 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 go. I can't. Nothing. I got nothing. How about you, Cappy? Did you see her? Did you see her? Yeah, I've, I've called over her. Over there, guys. I can see it. There she Just is. Right there. Can you see that? There she is over hey, on the surface go. here, guys. Go. Front of the boat. Front of the boat. Megan, you OK? You all right? I'm all right. Get her on the boat, guys. Right. Megan, are you OK? Let's just hold it right there. You okay? Yeah. Just relax, your drilling's running. Yeah, let's take a deep breath. Okay, this current up here, it's totally different down below. Wow. And so we were kind of fighting that, and then this tree came through right in the center of us. I don't even think he saw it. We Megan, were just like, we were just like separated. It just happened so fast. Well, I didn't even feel it when, like, the tether broke, but... You guys are lucky yeah. that rope came loose. Yeah. yeah. We would not have been able to get out of that thing. Now, with the current, the trees, and possibly uh, piranha, we're going to have to uh, suspend the diving until we can figure out a better way to do this or a safer way to do it. Even with a lot of experience under my belt, this was a really stressful situation. This is the worst visibility I have ever dove in, flat out. I want to expand a little bit to the north, just, you know, survey a little bit further. Having covered nearly all of the terrain where the Guarani village once stood, Brett and Megan will search right by the river's edge, while Cork and Emilio will look for any signs of treasure or markers deep in the jungle behind the village. Let's get to work. Come in. How do you feel? Come here. You got something? I don't know. The clay, you think? Yeah. Oh. It's a pottery shard. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. This is definitely an old piece. Like, this how is, old do you think? We're talking 300 plus years old. Really? Absolutely. This right here. That line there? Is indicating to me that this is definitely Guarani. Yeah? Very likely we're going to have something right under here. Moving the mud aside and putting the mud into the buckets and sifting. We could find beads. We could find little ornate uh, shells and different things like that. We don't want to lose those. Okay. The fact that you found that pottery shard as well as uh, those guys find, finding Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you hear that? What? No. It just hit something. Feel this. Oh. This is a large something right here. Look at that. You can see the top. Yeah. How big do you think it is? This is definitely a large vessel right here. What you got? I believe we got an ancient Gorony bull here. Wow. Yeah. You ready to get your hands dirty? Yeah. We got water coming in, and we're just trying to channel it down. Oh, it's cracked right here. How is it this old and this intact? With this mud the way it is, and it was filled with mud, so it was really giving a support system to the piece of pottery. Because, I mean, a lot of times these things will... there's something in here. Really? Yeah. Like what? What does it feel like? Be really careful. I don't know. I don't know if it's rock. I don't... Wow. This has, like, some edges on it, man. What is that? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. What is that? No way. <laughs> Jeremy, come here. 
Hey man, hey, we got something down here. We got something huge. Es una pieza bastante rara, ¿no? Very rare. Eh, sí. Very, 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 very rare. rare. Yeah. Yo conozco un, un lugar que han encontrado piezas similares, ¿no? ¿En serio, Paco? Sí, sí. He knows a place where artifacts, I mean, like these ones, have been found. Really? Sí, sí. something in here. This has like some edges on it. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. What is that? Hold What's on. It what is this doing it? here? Look at that. <laughs> oh, you guys. I believe this is a ceremonial conch shell. And if that is the case, these were like revered with the Inca. The acoustics that come out of these shells is just amazing. It's wow. so loud, it's almost yeah. like a whale call. And it goes for miles. We had the Tumi, but now we've got something that's also Inca. This means validation of the Inca connection to this site. And it's likely the Incan treasure is here. Ceremonial conch shells were prized by the Inca, who believed they could use them to communicate with their gods. The only plausible reason for an Inca conch shell to be on the Paraguay River, 500 miles from the ancient Incan Empire, is that it was part of the massive loot brought from Peru to Paraguay five centuries ago. And the discovery of this ceremonial conch confirms their theory. If we're finding this type of thing here, right by the water's edge, we gotta get back in the water. You betcha. On the team's first dive attempt, visibility was nearly zero, and Megan barely escaped the dangerous waters. I think Jeremy and I have solved the underwater problem. Let me present to you the macaroni. So Jeremy and Cappy have engineered a workaround, something they call a macaroni jet. The propeller of the 15 horse is actually gonna fit like right in here, okay. and it's gonna shoot clear water from the surface straight down. Jeremy and Cappy's device will suck in cleaner water from the surface of the river. The motor will jet this top water through the tube, which will redirect it down to Megan's dive path, hopefully improving visibility. It's, it's nerve wracking, you know? But we definitely believe that there's artifacts down there. So there's like no other option right now than to go diving. I can hear you. Let's go to the shore and start there. How are we looking, Kathy? Any hits? Oh, this area is pretty clean. I'm not getting anything at all. We're going to head towards the south at about 10 degrees. Roger that. I got a pretty good hit here. This is a strong hit. It's a strong hit. Hey, Cork, what's going on down there, man? They found something. I was picking up something, I think I'm going to have to dig a little bit. Whatever it is, it's kind of buried. Well, I think we got a hit on This is Topside uh, confirming. Have you found something? They've been in that one spot for a long time. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but it's some sort of metal. Did she say metal? There's something in metal. There. I look right here, there's some patina. You see it? I got a black Where do you come up? I can look at it better, Topside. What is that? What is it? I see some shine. Man, I have no idea what it is, but man, <laughs> is oh, it? there's something. Right? Hey, somebody grab me a bucket, man. <laughs> Let's put in some water. This has been there a long time. Yeah. 
looks like an ornamentation. Oh, there you go. Well, I think we've got something pretty valuable. Probably copper, bronze. All right, we're going to wow. go. Check this out. Dang, hey, look at this. What is it? That looks like a nose plate. It looks like it, yeah. A nose plate. It's a nose piece. You know, I've seen pictures of them. Never actually had one in my hand. I would say it's Incan. This would have been something they wore, but it would have been somebody higher up in society. Right. One of the most visible symbols of status of the Inca Empire, a nose plate, was a decorative ornament worn only by members of the royal family and religious elders. This piece of Inca jewelry is a very rare find. One made of gold recently fetched as much as $45,000 at auction. I like this, Cork. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so you see the the ornamentation right here. Turquoise. It was decorative and it represented wealth. Over in gold. Beautiful piece. Really beautiful piece. Yeah. It's party now. Let's go. <laughs> party. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Let's play our cards close to the chest uh -huh. when we get there. Right. How no. much English does Paco speak? To be honest, I really don't know. Okay. I mean, Let's probably not assume he knows that he doesn't Let's assume understand. he speaks right. English yeah, really exactly. well. Yeah. yeah. All right, is this it right here? Yep. Here he is. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Yeah. Paco. Bien. How are you? Bien. Hola, Paco. Hola. How are you? Yeah, very good. Hola. Hello. 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 Uh, y Paco. Usted ha estado investigando esta historia específica desde hace mucho tiempo, ¿verdad? Eh? Y tengo muchos años ya. Sí, eh, idone, soy idóneo, ¿no? Pero sí. sigo investigando con los guaraníes. So, Paco, eh, me voy a enseñar cosas uh, muy interesantes, me creo. A ver. Es un... Ah, Tumi. Tumi. Tú. Sí. Yo tengo un otro uh, artículo aquí. Mm. Claramente es Inca, ¿no es cierto? Es el... Very important. Es... This guy in the red backpack, is he guaraní? He's walked by like four times. We have a local guy, and every time he'd walk by, he was just locked in on the artifacts sitting on the table. ¿Cómo te llamas? Estacio. Me llamo Brett. ¿Tu vida aquí? Sí, sí. I think just walking up, saying hi to him, was a good way just to kind of get a feel. Was he just curious, or could he somehow be a threat? It's all good. He was me mugging those artifacts. Are we ready for the next? Ooh, ah, muy bueno. Sí, por atrás es. Sí, conozco, sí. Nariera is the here, no? Yeah, es una pieza bastante rara, no? Very rare. Eh, sí. Very, 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 very rare. Rare. Yeah. Yo conozco un, un lugar que han encontrado piezas similares, ¿no? ¿En serio, Paco? Sí, sí. Really? Sí, sí. sí. Santísima Trinidad. ¿Cómo se llama? Santísima Trinidad. A, a mission, a Jesuit mission. It's in between Paraguay and Argentina, about, I don't know, 300 kilometers to the south. Un portugués. Alexio García viene con sus guaraníes, se esconde en el tesoro. Pienso que por ahí. Entonces ahí tenían sus, sus refugios secretos entre la misión jesuítico. So what Paco is saying is there are rumors that say that this treasure hide secret tunnels and caves under the mission. This is great. This is going to be very helpful. Muchas gracias, Paco. Nos veremos. Gracias para la información. Por favor. Gracias. Ahora les digo una cosa. El tesoro Está maldito, está maldecido, como se dice, ¿no? He's saying like uh, the treasure, it seems like it's cursed. So we have to be, you know, we have to be careful. 1588. Jesuit missionaries arrive in Paraguay 60 years after the treasure is hoarded at the Guarani village. They convert the Guarani to Christianity, but also give them protection and live peaceably with them. As more Europeans arrive, slave traders and smugglers known as banderantes raid the village. The Jesuits fend them off, but the waves of attacks continue. With the village besieged, it's very possible the Jesuits may have moved the treasure down to the southern tip of Paraguay, 
where sits their largest mission, Trinidad. The team will divide into two groups to investigate different parts of the mission. Megan, Cappy, and Emilio will tackle the workshops, storehouses, and priest's quarters, while Cork, Jeremy, and Brett will focus on the church and crypt in search of a hidden chamber that might hold enough gold and silver to fill a semi-trailer truck. This would be a perfect place to hide a treasure. Can you imagine how many people have actually laying down right here? Probably where they let the bodies rot before they actually moved them. They would bathe them, then they would wrap them in white linen. Most people wouldn't even think about yeah. coming into a crypt. Sacrilege. It would be total sacrilege. You know, you would basically be selling, selling your soul to the devil. If nothing else, we're going to find another stepping stone to what we're looking for. Anything, man. Yeah, this is this is clear right here. There's not there's nothing metal. Nothing metal. No. No. End of crypt. Oh man. We searched the whole area of the crypt, and we're not getting hits with the ground penetrating radar. Too bad. No secret tunnels. I was surprised. I figured I'd get a lot of hits. I thought so too. Nothing. Nada. So we GPR'd the whole church. It's been pretty much combed over. The Jesuits, they were masters of the sea. It's almost like they're playing a chess game. They had something of value. They may not have hit it in their mission. I believe that they built small structures, like underground chambers or outposts in the jungle nearby and hoarded their treasure there. This is definitely not as untouched. Many All right, here we go. The team is using a state-of-the-art drone fitted with a thermal imaging camera that can detect differences in temperature. It gives a bird's eye view of the jungle and pinpoints any shape, generating a heat signature that varies from its environment. If there are structures out there, we're going to find them. Because the rocks will absorb more heat from the sun? Exactly. You're a little bit to your right up here. Right? Yep. Actually, hold on a second. I got something right here. That is definitely something. I've got something in a clearing right in front of you guys. It's definitely man-made. It's round. Yeah, I'm right over the hot spots. Is this is what we're looking for. I'm looking at the remnants of the man-made structure. Guys, time to go digging. We're looking for antiques. Could be. Jesuit. It could be Inca. Here's one. Peace. Take. Deep in the jungles of southern Paraguay, Jeremy Whalen and his team have followed the lead to the Jesuit mission of Trinidad. Having scoured the main ruins, they've expanded their search into the wilderness surrounding the mission because they believe it might hold some kind of structure that's safeguarding a fortune worth $400 million. I spotted some kind of irregular heat signature. You could see it was just red, perfectly red. Probably the remnants of a Jesuit structure, a chamber, an outpost. So Jimmy this could get really interesting. Jimmy saw. Look at that. It's a clearing. I think we are on location, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. We don't know exactly. All right, what are we looking at? These look like bricks. Might have been placed here a long time ago. Definitely handmade. See if there's any markings or anything different. To me, these look just like the ones that were used at the mission. These bricks are definitely old. Look at how burned up that is. Yeah, look at there's burn down here. Yeah. Hey guys, this one's different. You see? Ooh, yeah, it is. Wow, it's this hollowed out area. 
Look is. at that. So what do you think? I mean, it's a... What is it? This looks like a mold. Look at this channel right here. Yeah, it's a casting mold. They would take the rink of gold, they'd melt it down. They'd use these to actually make gold and silver bars. That's a lot easier to carry. That's a great find. Yeah, really cool. The team has unearthed an important tool that suggests the Jesuits may have transformed some of the original Incan loot into a more compact form. It's likely artifacts made of precious metals were melted down and poured into casting molds, creating gold and silver bars that could be easily hoarded and accurately valued. In today's market, a single gold bar from the 1700s could be worth as much as $2 million. So this basically proves you guys aren't crazy. Well, no, it does not prove that <laughs> these guys aren't crazy, but this is really Bloody. exciting. This is awesome. Ooh, yeah. There is this mystical hold that the treasure of the Trinity has over people that goes far beyond gold and silver. And I've been totally preoccupied with this treasure for years. So for us to have found ingot moles is amazing because it gives credence to all the years of research that I've put into the Jesuits and the treasure of the Trinity just the proof we're looking for. Where's the go bars at? That's what I want to know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the missing part. You know what we do in Argentina when we are happy? I mean, like the gauchos way. Don't get too close, guys, with these checkers. We'll override each other. Wait a minute. That was a hit? Yeah, that's a big one, too. Where you at? Here, marked it right there. Right there. That's center. Right. Dig that thing, man. Let's dig it. Oh, ah. damn it. Cap. No. Oh. Cap. How do you bite this? I'm a man. You don't have to take your pants off. Oh. Wow, you got lots of things, Cappy. Yeah. Oh, got to get him off my legs here. Wow. Is that it? You know what those are? Bullet ants, guys. Bullet, bullet ants. ants. Yeah, they're huge. Wow. Watch out, be careful. Huh? Bullet ants. If bite you, it's going to be a pain in the <laughs> Pain in the <laughs> yeah. Well said. Very aggressive, these bloody guys. Native to Central and South America, bullet ants are armed with the world's most excruciating sting. The pain is said to cut through a victim's body like a high caliber bullet. I tell you what, that scared the out of me when I start feeling crawling in my pants inside my pants. Are you all right? Yeah. Nothing bit me. Something really bad is going on. Just look at the history and how many people have searched for this treasure and how many people's died that had it in their hands. When we were on Snake Island, Jeremy almost got snake bit. He's moving, he's moving. Go, 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 go. go. And now it's Megan. Watch it. Whoa. She was attacked by piranha. Megan, Megan, are you okay? It's like one thing after the next. Some kind of bad juju, some bad omen involved with this treasure. And uh, when curses are on you, you don't get rid of them very easily. And I just feel like there's some darkness following this mission. Amelia, what's a market like, man? I mean, everyone goes to the market to buy, you know, these artifacts. But also, if you got with the wrong person, probably you're going to be in really big trouble. The underground trade of antiques generates $8 billion a year, making it the third most profitable illegal business in the world after narcotics and arms trafficking. In South America, these profits are often used to fund guerrilla organizations and boost the revenue of drug cartels. They're interested in selling us something. It's their own money. interest. Yeah. When they want to make money. Yeah. I'm sure they don't kill every person that comes in to buy yeah. something. We're going to pose as buyers to entice in the information. I hope he has some artifacts that might be part of the treasure of the Trinity, or at least knows where such artifacts can be found. If somebody's got information, you know, we're going to see if we can get it out of them. Let's get in and out of here quick. This looks like a really sketchy part of town. It does, doesn't it? You guys see him? No. No yet. How are we supposed to find somebody here? 
Hola, estamos buscando un muchacho de barba de esta altura. ¿Lo vieron? Así, más o menos, pero medio. Sí. ¿Ahora? ¿No? Sí. Gracias, eh. Here he is. Ah. Santiago is sleeping. Ahí está. Come on. I don't want to lose him. Perdón. Santiago. Espera, Santiago. Catch him, Emilio. Can we tell him to slow Catch down? up to him, dude. Ahora, Santiago. Yeah. I think what he was doing was trying to actually confuse us so we couldn't find our way back there again. Go ahead, Brett. Yes. Pasen, pasen. Cristian, ¿cómo va? How are you doing? Cor Cork. Brett. Please, Brett. sit down. We're looking for antiques. Could be Jesuit. It could be ink gun. Maybe something like that. Let's see. This piece is... Very, very beautiful. Please take. Pretty. Yes. Very nice. That's very interesting. All right. Eyes are wrong. No. Crest is wrong. This is a fake. What? We said it's nice. Do you have anything else? The first item comes out. To me, and we look at each other, and I'm going, uh huh. Okay, we understand the game now. Show us the real stuff. Do you have any other pieces that we can see? This one. Peace. All right. It's plata. Yes. Mm. It's plata. Silver. Red. This is real, dude. Jesuit. You've got all the right symbols, and see the slant on it. See that slant? That came right from, out of Yep. Came right out of a cast. Definitely. It's the exact size of that brick. The cast mold, yeah. yeah. It's the exact size of the cast mold. Pure silver. Can it smash? Do you Maybe. have more of these? Maybe. Here or not? How much? How much? Quanto? 10,000. How do we know it's real? Where did you get it? Is this just sweets? Yes. It came from a mission here close by. Maybe. You don't know where it came from. I know, but this information can you buy. We didn't bring any money with us today. We just wanted to Just come and look there. and talk with you, and then we'll go back and talk with our compañeros, with our friends, and then we can come back no, tomorrow. No, 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 no. Me están diciendo que no trajeron dinero y vienen a comprar sin dinero. Vienen a comprar acá sin dinero. O sea, mi tiempo es cualquiera para ustedes. Let's just go, let's go. No, 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 you don't know if it's good info. Yeah, how are you going to know? Check out the bar right there. Man, that's awesome, guys. That is awesome. Look at that. It was the exact same size as the, as the brick castings. It had the markings on it. Oh, it, man. It, it was spot on. Jeremy and Cork believe the silver bar is authentic because it has the telltale markings carved into ingots from the 1700s, a serial number a fineness number indicating the purity of the silver and the initials of the silver master who supervised its production. Finally, the bar is marked with a cross indicating it was probably smelted in a Jesuit mission. According to that guy, that bar was found in the very first Jesuit mission in Argentina, Santa Ana. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we found the cast molds in Trinidad, mm -hmm. Paraguay. Yeah. So the treasure moved. So what made the Jesuits move the treasure in the first place? What made them leave Trinidad? 1721 in Paraguay. Most locals and settlers are living in extreme poverty, but the Jesuits have amassed great wealth and power. 
Over the next 15 years, the commoners revolt against the Jesuits and attack many of their missions. Eventually, the revolt of the Camioneros, or commoners, is put down, but the Jesuits are left feeling vulnerable. Cork believes they are forced to move their most valuable asset to their most fortified mission, Santa Ana, across the Piranha River in Argentina. The Jesuits, they were probably afraid they'd lose that treasure, so they moved it to a better defended area. They had over a thousand Guarani to defend, plus they actually had the only cavalry. That's a pretty good place to protect something. Kind of makes sense, though, if you think yeah. about it, you know. Searching for a more inconspicuous pathway to the Santa Ana mission, the team locates a small tributary that they believe was used by the Guarani and Jesuits to approach the mission secretly. Cork, what exactly are we looking for? What we're looking for is Guarani Pivaru. Basically, it's almost like a game trail, except it's a little bit bigger and a little bit more prominent. Hundreds of years ago, they created these trails to make it easier to travel through the jungle. And later, as the Jesuits learned about them, they ended up starting to use them in order to do covert travel. This will be a good back door for us into Santa Ana. This is a trail they would have taken from Trinidad to Santa Ana. So we're looking at something that's at least six feet wide, cut through some old foliage. We're like within 200 yards of it, so keep your eyes open. There's kind of a cut right here. You see that? Uh, I don't know. Hard to say. There? Uh, yeah. That's it right there. It's right here. We found it. It's right here. All right, guys, we got about a four hour hike. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, guys, it's a dangerous caterpillar. You can see it there. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Looks nice. That is very, very deadly. They can burn you, and then the toxin could be going to inside your body, and that it could be really bad. When you shake the branches like this, they can just fall from the tree. That is definitely some dense jungle. You could definitely disappear and never be heard from again in this place. We're going out further into the areas that have not been researched yet, have not been revealed. Now we're in a situation where we've got that many more dangerous things to deal with. There's a lot of snake territory up here, y'all. I spent plenty of time in the jungle, but I've never been this deep. Hey, we got a wall over here, man. Check it out. Whoa. Are we that close to Santa Ana? Uh-uh. Not even near yet. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. This wasn't on your map, was it, Cork? Nope. There is nothing supposed to be out of here. What the hell could this be? You're in the correct area there. <laughs> what do you see, Megan? Cappy came in, came in in the water. Where? There. There. Holy! I'm going after. Megan, Megan, there's a caiman on the bank. What? I can't see him. Where'd that damn thing go? Jeremy. The treasure hunters are following a lead from the black market near the Jesuit mission of Trinidad that suggested the treasure of the Trinity was moved to the more fortified mission of Santa Ana in Argentina. So the team is now retracing the most likely path by the Jesuits and Guarani to the mission. We were looking for the Jesuit mission of Santa Ana, but that's miles away. To find a well-constructed complex structure here out in the middle of nowhere is simply incredible. Hey, do you guys see this tunnel down here? There's like a little passageway through there. Well, I'm going to poke the detector in there, see if I'm picking anything out. Oh, really? 
Good thing I'm not claustrophobic. This is about the size of a tomb. Whoa, I got something here. Please. It looks like China. It's got an inscription on the bottom. This is German. German? We're in the middle of nowhere, and there's this little fine China, you know, fine China porcelain set. How odd is that? I mean, this was probably yeah. pretty expensive, you know? So we got underground tunnels and we got fine China. Yeah. Oh, dry hole, but uh, I almost like the looking better than the finding sometimes, I think. Ooh. Jeremy, where you at, man? Here. Look at this thing. It's gotta be a bathtub. Looks like the uh, powder room. Look at the tile on this thing, man. Yep. Wow. You got a bathtub in the middle of the jungle. It's like an old compound or something. All right, talk to me, baby. Anything? Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I'm a hound dog on the scent of something. Man. Holy hey, Cork, Megan, yeah. Brett. I found oh, coins. Uh, look at that German swastika on there. Yeah. No Whoa. way. Let me see. What is this doing it? here? God, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Maybe it was a Nazi hideout. This is not a real surprise for me. I mean, the Nazis were here. I mean, in Argentina, they were here. This is Paraguay, too. Paraguay and Brazil, even. Wow. This is a very Real permanent problem. structure. He's got to running keep, water. To keep, to keep hit. tight, yeah, yeah, to keep hit, yeah. As the Third Reich crumbled at the end of World War II, many prominent Nazis fled to South America, particularly Argentina, where a pro-fascist government gave shelter to as many as 5,000 Nazis. But as the locals learned about these unwanted settlers, some Nazis went into hiding deep in the Argentinian jungles. Boy, that's some real dense stuff. We've been following this thing forever. Emilio, we heading in the right direction, man? Yeah, I can see it. Look at this. Hey, we made it, man. Ooh, man, this is awesome. Welcome to Santana, eh? This place is huge. Yeah. They say it was a lot more secure here than at Trinidad. Yep. So it makes perfect sense to move it here. Founded in 1633, Santa Ana was built like a garrison because it straddled the border between Spanish and Portuguese territories. Thick stone walls were erected around its perimeter. A large cavalry was established and 4,000 Guarani militiamen were trained in European-style weaponry and tactics, making Santa Ana the most heavily fortified mission in South America and the logical place to hide something of great value. The silver bar back at the uh, black market, this is where they got it from. So there could be more here. As far as we know, we could be standing on a pile. Well, we got a lot of ground to cover here, so let's split up. Santa Ana, give up your secrets, man. The Jesuits were way too clever and deceptive to hide their most valuable asset in an obvious place. So like in Trinidad, we're gonna use the ground penetrating radar and metal detectors in the center section of the mission, but our main focus is gonna be in the peripheral areas of the site, the less historically significant parts like the crypt and the jungle surrounding the mission. That's where we expect to find the treasure or any markers left behind by the Jesuits that'll point to its resting place. No hits so far, eh? Doth it, doth it. I tell you what, this place is creepy, just looking at it. Hey, look at this, there's actually caskets in here. They're open. There's no bodies, dude. No bodies at all. Nobody broke in here. 
they're probably grave robbing them. I mean, here in Brazil, in Paraguay, in this part of Argentina, there are a lot of people who believe in, you know, black magic. Do you think they took the bodies for black magic, maybe? Well, who knows? Let's do a little more recon. We gotta, we gotta get to detecting again. Man. It's actually a, kind of a weird smell. That's the smell of death. We got one area. We have to uh, check out the uh, entrance of the Pibaru. Makes sense. That's where they loaded, offloaded all their boats. That could have been a situation where they left another marker for us back there. Yeah. So it wouldn't hurt to look. To transport such a massive fortune from Trinidad to Santa Ana, the Jesuits and Guarani canoed up the river in small groups until they reached the Pierburu, a hidden jungle trail leading from the riverbank to the mission. Cork and Jeremy think it's likely that the first group arriving at the mouth of the Pierburu left a marker there for subsequent teams so they would all have directions to the secret drop-off location for the treasure. Our goal now is to hunt down this mark at the mouth of the Tibra Trail. Thing is, like the Guadani village in Paraguay, erosion over the centuries has caused a big chunk of the Pibra to disintegrate into the river. We'll have to grid out and scour a 100-foot square area near its entrance, both on land and in water. Tell me what you see down there. I can't tell where I am. Move toward our boat. Come back this way. What do you see, Megan? Cappy came in, came in in the water. Where? There. Holy. I'm going after it. Megan, Megan, there's a caiman on the bank. Do not go near the shore. I can't see him. Where'd that damn thing go? Jeremy! Jeremy! Ah. Get on the water! Get her out! Come to the surface, Megan. Come to the surface. You gotta get out now. Man, he's going nuts. Get Megan out. Get her out. Megan, you need to get out. Oh, Jesus. Damn it, Megan, can you read me? <coughs> watch it, watch it. Where'd he go? I don't see him, Cabby. I don't see him. Get her out of the water. Get her out now. Get back to the boat, Jared. Get her out of the water. Come on, Megan, get out now. Megan, Megan. There she is. Get her out, get her out. Saw him go away? I don't know. He just dropped. I didn't see him go anywhere. I know we're kind of outside of the, the mapped area. Yeah, the jungle has completely taken over. Guys, guys. What? Look at this. What do you got? I mean, what is this? Stone. Stone, yeah. Stone wall of some kind. Man, there is nothing supposed to be out of here. How far does it go that way, Court? Well, from what I can see, it goes for another 10 feet of the most. All right, I'll start clearing off the top here. If you want to try to find the edge of this wall. Yeah, I'm going to follow it right here. Who knows what else we might find in here? Hmm. This is interesting. Look at, you get, those are cut stones. You can yep. see that. Cut blocks. It actually goes around the corner. Yep. And the blocks. Yeah, look at, there's a 90 degree right here. It's almost like an entrance. What is this place? So this was a chamber. Big enough to hold hundreds of millions worth in ingots. What do you say about uncovering all this? Maybe there's markings, carvings, anything that might reveal what it was once used for. Megan, look. Whoa. Court. What? Hey, Cappy, come here, man. What is it? Cork, are you seeing this? Yeah, I'm seeing exactly what that is. We've got some carvings on the floor. That's a real marker. It's a 
The Jesuit treasure map. Treasure map? We had one back on Snake Island. This is incredible. I can't believe it. Historically, the Jesuits carved complex symbols on stone markers to secretly point to a location where something of significant value was hidden. So here, this is the Tobias here? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that from Snake Island. It's a starting point. This indicates that you are here basically on the map, right? Yeah, these are called barras. The barras are like a century old unit for distance. But the thing is, these are a little bit different. They're not like the other barras that we found on Snake Island. They've got a little dimple in them. I don't know, I have no idea what this is. And this, I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, it might be another spot, it might be another junction point. Take a look at my research. I'm pretty sure I got some information about this. This is thrilling, man. Finding this marker is like getting a secret message directly from the people who once had this treasure. As treasure hunters, we rarely have moments like this. Pretty special, man. Does that mean that the treasure could have been right where we're standing right now? It's it quite possible. Yeah. It's like leaving a forwarding address. They would only leave the carving if they moved the treasure. A road map to, to where it's laying now. This chamber that we found is actually a starting place. This is the Tobias, the start here symbol. Then we have two wavy lines. That would be a river. Okay. We go directly across the river. Then we have these two kinds of bars. There's the Varro with just an open circle, which represents 600 feet. All the rest are Varros with dots in the middle, which would represent 900 feet. I did the math on this. Actually turns out to be 8,100 feet. And then going that way, we've got 3,300 feet. What's a circle mean? The sure, big circle cave. means a cave. Oh, it means cave? Yeah. Are you pretty positive on yeah. those calculations? Oh, yeah. Court, you know? yeah. So we have to look for a cave or a cavern. It sounds so easy, right. but yeah. it ain't going to be. Yeah. Well, here's to Cork figuring things out. Salut. Cork has determined that the GPS coordinates of the underground marker lie directly in line with the tributary Arroyo Santa Ana. Once the team crosses the tributary, the virus count will begin. They will head west through dense jungle for one and a half miles, and then north for another two thirds of a mile. After this punishing hike, they'll need to track down a cave or some other hidden structure that might be the resting place of the treasure of the Trinity. We're looking for a cold spot, which would indicate a cave. This time of the day, uh, the, uh, the cooler spots are gonna be darker. A cave in this area should stand out in relation to the rest of the ground. Are you seeing something? I'm looking. Wait a minute. There's something. It's a cool spot right out there. Everything else is still yeah, kind of warm. Clark, what are you seeing? I'm seeing an overhang. It's pretty open. It's pretty wide. To me, it looks like it could be the beginning of a cave. How high does it look? Can you tell on there? Yeah, it looks about 90 feet above the bottom. Any other way down? You see any other trails or anything? This is the only way. If we retrace our steps and search for another route, we could easily lose a day. We're going to have to uh, repel. We're going to anchor to three different points, and all we have here is trees, right? So definitely that one. This is going to be our main anchor right here. Um, and then we'll do a third backup up here. Right. Why don't you guys clear the path? Are we going to do this or what? Rope. I didn't hear it hit the bottom. I'm about 90% sure we got enough rope to reach the bottom. What happens if we don't? Well, only one way to find out, right? That's why he gets to go first. <laughs> Rock and roll. Walkie check. You got it? Yeah. Careful. Some people say don't look down, but it's beautiful. It's a lot higher than I thought, too. So as you get below the rock and you're freely suspended, just protect your head. All right, guys. See you on the bottom. See you on the bottom. Ow! When he hits the bottom, he'll call me. Red, did you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah. I got one more question for you. Oh. Oh my 
It's a waterfall, right? We're on the wrong end of it. We're gonna have to uh, repel. All right, rock and roll. Careful. Oh. He's off the line. Brett, Brett, what? Brett, come in. Brett, come in. Brett, can you read me? Brett, 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 come in. I don't see him. Can you read me? <laughs> on the bottom, guys. Good oh, to go. Man. I got pulled under the waterfall, slamming me against a rock. I'm okay. The treasure hunters are following the cryptic directions carved on a Jesuit marker that they found in the jungles surrounding the Santa Ana mission in Argentina. According to the team's calculations, the marker points to a cave located at the bottom of this waterfall that might be the resting place of the legendary treasure of the Trinity. That's so cool! Yeah. <laughs> All right, Cap! Uh, hey, come here! I think I got what we're looking for! Get over here, get over here. What do you got? It looks like there's a whole network of caves going back in there. Look at this, man. Probably runs all the way into the mountain, dude. It's all spelunking, man. You know, this could be it. Jeremy has found a cave that matches the destination depicted on the marker found on the outskirts of the Santa Ana mission. As hinted by that marker, this cave lies two and a half miles from the Arroyo Santa Ana, in a location so remote, it would have been a logical place to hide an ancient hoard of silver and gold worth around $400 million. The research and the drawings, it all comes together. Let's get to work, man. I'll go in as far as I think safe and kind of See where it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and crawl up into the system and see where it goes. Bat! Oh, here's another oh, bat. Oh, goes. Oh, is the best. Ah! <laughs> Those are huge. Vampires bat, they could give you, you know, rabies. We need to be careful about this place. Hey, I'm gonna go all the way to the back of the cave and then detect my way out. Be careful. We don't want no cave-ins, dude. They got a hit, man. I got a hit, Cabby. Got a hit? Yep. Yep, here it is. I got two bronze nails back here. Somebody, somebody's back here. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Cap. Yeah. I got a couple boards down here, man. They look pretty old. Look at it. See. That's part of a barrel, man. Look. See the curb on it? Yeah, I got another piece right here, dude. Perfect. If yeah. there wasn't enough people, then they would have moved a little bit. You know, they would have moved it up somewhere, hidden it, come back, got the rest of it. They would have did it in steps, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jeremy's convinced the treasure was so enormous, it was transported in small chunks, each portion stashed away in compact barrels. A one-gallon barrel filled with only a couple of precious metal bars or artifacts would weigh over 100 pounds and have a value of more than two and a half million dollars. I think this is something that ties to the treasure of the Trinity. Why don't you take all this stuff out of here? I'm yeah. going to search all the way out to the mouth of the cave, see what else we can find. <sighs> oh. Got a hit. Got a hit. Dude. Hell. These guys are not going to believe this. Put your hand out. Coin? 
Oh, wow. Man, this is awesome. Is it a modern coin or an old coin? It's 18 something. I can't read the last number because it's on my glasses, but it's. 1870. 70. That was the end of the war. Well, this is the like war of the Triple Lands. Republica de Paraguay. Paraguay. We're in Argentina. This was Paraguay. Huh. But after the end of that war, it was Argentina. The War of the Triple Alliance was the bloodiest conflict in Latin American history. Between 1864 and 1870, Paraguay clashed with the alliance of Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina. It eventually suffered a devastating defeat, losing 70% of its male population and almost a quarter of its territory. You know what actually baffles me is the fact this is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but if you're trying to hide out from people are trying to kill you, that makes sense. The coin. It's not tied to the treasure of the Trinity, but just to uh, have connected with a part of this history in this area is really cool. Okay. Let's get teams going so we can get out in the field. Jeremy, you and I and Cappy will look at that cave, and Brett and Emilio and uh, Megan will go further in the jungle. Spread out right here, y'all. Okay. These jungles, every meter you walk, it just looks the same as the meter that you had just walked before. It can make you crazy, you know what it I mean? It does. It's so thick. Which way's left and right and up and down? Oh. Hey, Emilio, Brett. Yeah. We got a kill over here. It's still warm. Oh, man. It is a poca deer. What killed this? Can you tell? See that? Yeah. The base of the skull, fangs there, yeah. the skull, claws here. Look at right yeah. marks right Fangs there. go through. It was a big cat, for sure. It's definitely a jaguar. It's got to be nearby. Nothing. We need to leave this place right away. Jesuit to me. No. Get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> it's like Snake Island all over again. We found the remnants of the lockbox in the cave there. Cork is gone, man. The mother load always seems to be just out of our grasp. Our best hope now is, ironically, we've misinterpreted the Jesuit marker found uh, outside Santa Ana. Maybe the endpoint wasn't meant to be a cave, but some other landmark. Uh, so now we have to comb this jungle for a different, distinctive land feature. Shh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God. What is that? Back, 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 back. Joe, it's moving its prey. The, the deer we saw. The jet, I saw it. I think it's moving, it's moving. This thing comes charging up, we gotta do something. We have the flare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Whoa. Wow, that had to scare it off. Yeah, 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 definitely. They don't like big noises, strong noises. He wouldn't like come back around and like, Track us from behind, right? No, no that no. bang should have scared them off. 
We'll head straight east, all right? That's good, yeah. What is that? Like a rock wall right here, guys. See that? Uh, Emilio, what is this? I have no idea, man. Here, we got to radio those guys. Hey, we just stumbled onto something incredible out here. We got to get over to our position straight away. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, this is. It's the exact stone that was at the Santa Ana mission, like the exact same stone. There's nothing on the map in this no, area that you no, know of? Nothing. You guys... Let's just work a little bit more of the moss off. Just use your hands. All right. What is that? Hey, Captain, come here. Holy smokes. Cork, come here. What do you got? Dude, that's a carving. This is no, this is totally unique. What's it mean? I don't know. Megan, come here. We got a carving here, man. Check it out. Look at that. What do you think, Meg? That one's really perplexing. I'm not sure. It doesn't ring to me Jesuit at all. I can't even imagine that being Jesuit. These are what I need. Is that like Guarani to you? I mean, I'm not sure. Probably, yeah. They carve all kinds of stuff, right? Animals, figurines, right? Yeah. Hundreds of Guarani rock carvings dating back thousands of years have been discovered in Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil. These etchings often feature animal footprints and simple pictures of creatures linked to Guarani legends. I mean, the head is like a dog head, right? And the body's really long, like a lizard or even a caiman, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's unusual. It almost looks like it has like a dragon or it could even be like a jaguar. Dog or something. Till now, every clue we've found on Snake Island last year, in the jungle the past three months have been Jesuit. But this one's Guarani. That tells me either the Guarani have taken over the treasure or the Jesuits have relied heavily on the Guarani to hide it. The treasure seems to be consistently moving northward, but there are no Jesuit missions north of here. So this marker might be hinting that the loot is now hoarded deep in Guarani territory. It's, it's even more off the beaten path. And that means our job has just become a lot harder. So I want to document it, and I want to check out if there's anything else right around here. Let's do it. Don't All right. Okay. The rest of it's done. Get it done. Hold on, hold on. We've got company. Why did that broke? We had pretty much dispersed to really work the area. I was by myself, and these guys came up out of the forest. Ojevete. Ojevete. The Guarani, they came in, and they wanted to know our intentions. Why we're there, what we're doing. Sabian, Sabian, hey Megan, come over here. Pasa que nosotros no sabíamos nada de la presencia de ustedes en esta zona sagrada nuestra. ¿Qué hacen acá? Estamos haciendo un documental, estamos filmando y haciendo investigación, mostrar lo que fue la época en que los guaraníes y los jesuitas trabajaban juntos. Once Emilio was explaining our purpose, you could feel the tension and the tone just change. They represent the Guarani nation of the province of Misiones, and they are in charge of the care of all this area. Like a tribal security. Yeah, just defending their heritage. Can you ask them if they know what this place has been used for in the past? Esta zona que es zona prohibida, este este lugar precisamente no conocemos con profundidad. They know their ancestors were living here with the Jesuits. No more than that. Lo que sí conocen con mayor este son nuestros eh, los caciques más viejos. O sea, sería sería conveniente de que nos reunamos con nuestro cacique más viejo en la aldea. We have a Guarani carving on a stone that we need deciphered. And that'd be a great opportunity to have it translated for us. I mean, the elders should know. Sí, 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 estamos totalmente de acuerdo. So let's just go with them and try and find out what their elders know about this because they might be able to help us. Hey, 
Damn, vines everywhere, dude. Come on, guys, we are gonna lose these guys. This is some really nasty stuff here. <laughs> Emilio, you see him? Yeah, I see them. Go back there, Cappy. Hey, hold on, man. Stop, what? Stop, stop. Cappy's gone. Put him, put him, put him. Wait. He's behind us. Let's go. Cappy! 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 Hey, Cappy! Hey, hey. What happened with you? I mean, you okay? Right here. What? Cappy's here. Watch out, guys. Oh, no, 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 Cappy! What Cappy! Get the tree off of him! Be careful, Cap, can you hear me? Cappy. Of course. Yeah, I'm not moving. You're okay, coming over me. Yeah. I'm not moving. I'm holding the side of the way. Okay. <coughs> oh, careful, careful, careful. What's hurt? What's hurt? Back up! Ready? I'm, going, I'm going to look at the dog. Cappy, tell me what's wrong. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Well, we need to lay him flat right okay. here. Check this area back in here, and I go further up. What back? I researched. It's all in there. Brett, you lazy. What are you doing? Take your jacket off right now, please. Give me your vest. <laughs> Cappy, Cappy, Cappy. Let me see your face. Okay. His heart rate's slow. He's in physical pain. He didn't have any water. He's dehydrated. <laughs> hey, 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 Oh. <laughs> He's dealing with PTSD. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Can you hear me, Cap? Oh, I thought I was back in Vietnam again. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That was a teenager. I was a. Teenager, you know, I was like, you me, it's like, kill me. All my buddies, all my friends got killed. They're like, oh, you know. Cap, he's been through a lot of stuff. He's been in Vietnam, he's been in Iraq, and post traumatic stress is a very, very real thing. I'm okay, man, I'm okay. Who's Jeremy? Who's Jeremy, brother? <laughs> You're my best friend, man. Yes. I got your back, brother. You know, Cappy and I have done a lot of treasure hunts together. You know? He's a really good friend. And for me, that was pretty emotional, actually. I never had an incident like that, you know, happen to me, you know, like this. And uh, I am very, very lucky because I have these friends. The team resumes their trek through some of the most unforgiving terrain in South America, inching their way towards an isolated Guarani village in northern Argentina. We definitely are getting close, guys. They hope the village elders can decipher a mysterious Guarani carving found in the unmapped ruins outside of Santa Ana that might have some connection to an ancient hoard of silver and gold worth around $400 million. Yeah, I can see it. Look at this place. Kids, that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to stand up, you know, our hands like this. Shevete means hello, welcome. Shevete. Hey, Cappy. Hey, Cappy. Hey, Cappy. Hey, Cappy. Hey, Cappy. Hey, 
Sí, podemos entrar. Ah. As we walked in, I was actually feeling the sense of opening up a whole new world. We have tapped into a very ancient history that not very many people know about. The Guarani elders are now the connection of the history with the present day. So for us to have a little peek into their point of view, that would be phenomenal to us. <laughs> Yeah. In 1767, the Jesuits were going to be arrested. They know that the noose is closing around their neck. It was their last resort. Their last holdout. Yeah, exactly. In the mid 1500s, Spanish Jesuits arrive in South America. And over the course of the next 200 years, they grow extremely wealthy and powerful. King Charles III of Spain, fearing they've amassed too much wealth and power, passes an order expelling all Jesuits from South America. The Spanish army is sent to round up the Jesuit priests. Many missions are destroyed and thousands of Guarani are slaughtered. But as Spanish troops close in on Santa Ana, it's thought that a small band of Guarani and Jesuits escapes into the uncharted jungles away from the mission. They set up an outpost there, which were the ruins discovered by the treasure hunters centuries later. I mean, this place is not on a map. Yeah, exactly. Without any yeah. name, it wasn't a mission. I mean, nobody knows about that place. It was really hidden into the forest. What I'm really curious about is the, uh, the carving. Eso es lo que nosotros encontramos en la ruina. A conseguir la información que estamos necesitando. Sí, va a estar Juan. Teyuyagua. ¿Qué es el teyuyagua? Teyuyagua para un animal grande, pero tienen Igual un perro. Adentro de la piedra vive todavía. Hasta ahora. Sí. Por el coso, estas cosas por el coso, y ahora está virado y algunas cosas más. Before the Jesuits were fired from South America, the Guarani, the Jesuits, they took the treasure to a very remote place, very far away along the Paraná River, something like that. And well, this special stone will point to the treasure. It'll lead us to the treasure? Yeah. The stone, where is it? Only the Palomino. The name of this fall is Nyakundai. More than 400 years ago, the Guarani handed the treasure over to the Jesuits because the missionaries could give them protection. But two centuries later, the Jesuits leaned on the Guarani to hide the loot. You know, if, if, if the elders are correct, the treasure is far away from all Jesuit missions in an area so remote, the Spanish can never even step foot there. It looks like that's exactly where we're headed. The trail of the treasure is leading the team deeper into terrain where few have ever ventured. They will leave behind the Guarani village in Argentina and head up the Piranha River. After 120 miles of turbulent piranha infested waters, they will launch their search for the stone marker at the base of the mighty Nacunde Falls. We're going to run straight in. Follow me to the rock. Here we go. Ah. I can see why the Guarani called this a sacred place. I mean, look at it. 
Cork, Megan, and Brett will comb every inch of the rocky shoreline with metal detectors, while Jeremy's group will cover the lower half of the slopes, starting with the area next to the small waterfall. For the higher sections of the cliff face, the team will send up the drone in search of any stones or rock structures that stand out from their surroundings. The challenge is this area is not only large, but it's very treacherous. Whoa. In the shore, all the rocks are very slippery because of the moisture and mist. Watch this stuff here. It's a roller. This thing is so much bigger than I thought, Court. Yeah. It's all in there. Brett! 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 My God! Brett! Back. You guys all right? Holy sh! There's intel's in there, the black book and everything. Man, you all right? What the Get in here. You all right? Damn! Yeah. I thought we lost you there for a sec. He could have broke both his legs, knocked himself out. When stuff like that happens, you don't really have time to think about it. With Cork's little black book, uh, you know, if we lose that, we're done. Got a couple little bruises here and there, but I think I was pretty lucky, honestly. Thank God, everything's in here. Megan, you're a brave woman. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get it dried off. That the Guarani elders claimed would be distinct from its environment and point to the location of the treasure of the Trinity. I mean, it's nothing but jungle for miles and miles. Man, it's remote out here. What do you think it would have been like, you know, for the Jesuits, barefoot, all the stuff we're dealing with, and we've got modern equipment. Hey, guys. What? Look at this. Can you see that? That is a funky looking rock, if it's a rock. That's weird, it goes up, and then all the weight's yeah. on top. I'll try to get closer to it, hold on. It looks man-made. I know, right? Could that be it? That must be what the Guarani were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The stone should hopefully lead us to where the treasure of the Trinity can move to. We gotta get our feet over there. Can you get a GPS mark on that? About 372 meters from right here. Right Just over there. there. That's south southeast, guys. Yeah. Whoa. Got below. Look out, man. Good way to crack your skull open out here. While Cork, Brett, and Cappy head out to investigate the unusual rock formation. That looks really slippery. Jeremy, Megan, and Emilio scope out the small waterfall, the other visible landmark in the area that might hold the stone clue that points to the enormous treasure. You don't want to get too close to the edge. Where's Jeremy? He just, like, disappears. Where is he? Jeremy! I hate it when you do that. What? Disappear under rocks, into holes and caverns. I've been in kick. I'll look for carving. Keep okay. your eyes open. God dang, man. 
think this is it, guy. It's right here. Oh, that's smack. wild, isn't it? It's almost like it's been cut, huh? Nothing, huh? I'm not getting anything here, man. I don't see any kind of marking in it. If you want to go up there, you know, check it out and see what's in there. You know, look through all the nooks and crannies of it. Looks like it's ready to slide right off right now. Or is it down on that side? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to look down. Anywhere from three to 700 feet. Be really careful, man. Dude. What do you see around you? There's all sorts of nooks and crannies, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Uh, it looks like there's a crack up here. Yeah. I'm gonna drop down, see if I can see something. <sighs> Wait a second. What is this? What the hell is this? Hey guys, I think I have something. What is it? <laughs> what are you seeing, Brad? Talk to us. I don't know, it's uh. Are you okay? Are you all right? Right. Yeah, Cap, we're good to go. It looks like an egg almost, like a, like a huge egg. Can you get it out? Hold on, it's covered in mud. Hold on one sec. What is that? I don't know. It's uh it looks like a rock, but it it's smooth, it's got a look at that. See that straight line right there? That's something. Oh, look at that. Hold what on, is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's more. Oh <laughs> going? What is that? It looks like a rock, but it, it's smooth. It's got a, it's got an engraving on it. <laughs> Bring that thing down here, man. Ow! All right, I'm coming down. You all right, man? Check it out. It's crazy, huh? Uh, you man, can't tell that's... me that's natural. Nah. Is that what the Guarani were talking about? It's got to be the stone. I guess it's definitely out of place. Yeah. The circle by itself is a cave. I mean, I already know that. So what has triangled in? I can't find the, you I don't, don't, find I don't have the symbol. Yeah, I got something. I have a reference to alchemy, and within the Jesuit religion, there was actually a group that used to practice alchemy. Alchemy was a primitive form of chemistry that blended medieval science with spirituality. The Catholic Church considered it to be an occult discipline and banned its practice. However, some Jesuit groups around the globe secretly studied alchemy especially its complex use of symbols that represented metals and natural elements. Some Jesuits, I mean, they were doing it because they were just interested in knowledge. They were not intimidated by the church. Finding a tie between the alchemists and the Jesuits is a monumental 
find for us because what that means is there's a rogue element that's involved with the treasure of the Trinity. And this group of Jesuits that might have kept secrets about alchemy would also be able to keep secrets from the rest of the church about the treasure of the Trinity. Alchemists, they would use the symbol of the triangle to represent fire and water, depending on which way it points. So if it points up, it's fire, and if it points down, it's water. Can we rule out any kind of fire cave? There's no volcanoes or anything like no, that in no, this area? No, 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 no. Or... That's water. So water I cave. I know only one place where you're going to find rocks or stones, like Let's this see. one, where you got a lot of underwater caves. Really? The place I'm thinking is the Uruguay, Uruguay Fall. It has caves around the, the waterfall? Or around and under the water. Underwater. Yeah, caves. you go through the caves. How far from here? Six, seven, or something like that. Miles? Yeah. It's quite a long way. All right. Okay. Burning daylight. Let's get going. I mean, this is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that we're paying out. But well, I don't mind a grind as long, as long as it's a grind with a payday. How do we know we're not on the wild goose chase, the Jesuit wild goose chase? I mean, you don't know. Shh, guys, guys, Wait, shh, shh. Come on, silence. Where? Shh. Listen, listen. Can you hear them? Yeah, I hear it. Where is it? Oh. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake? Yeah. Shh. Where? I don't know. I can't see it. Where? Well, hey, stay calm. Don't, no, you guys, don't it? move. Don't move. That rattle. That's a warning. Nobody move, man. Somebody's too close. God, I hate these things, man. Where is it? Trying to spot it. It's right there. Jeremy, it's right by you. Don't move. Where? Right there! Jesus! Ah, it's struggling! Get it down! Got it, I got it, I got it. Right here. Got him down. It hit me. I don't think I'm hit. <sighs> I don't think I think I'm all right. You don't need pain anywhere. No, I don't. I, I don't think I. I mean, I felt it. I felt it hit me, but I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm struck. He had his snake eaters on. Hold that sucker down, Cork. Hey, oh. Jeremy. Oh. Yeah. So close. Two holes right here. The fangs didn't go all the way through the gators. It's smart you had those on. Yeah, a tropical rattlesnake takes more life than any other that? snake yeah, in South and North America. If you got bitten by that snake here where we are... Yeah, I know, Emilio. Yeah, anti-venom's pointless when you're two days away from it. Yeah. Get that dang snake yeah, out of here. Yeah, I'll get it out of here. Hey guys, I think we, we're getting close now. Look! That's gorgeous! After all we have been through, eh? here it is. The little white fall, guys. Salto Uruguay is the ultimate hiding spot. Riddled with seemingly endless caves, pools, and natural tunnels. However, many of these natural formations are not clearly visible, so the team has a very difficult and hazardous search ahead of them. All right, guys, let's start at the back uh -huh. and then just maybe work our way that way. The land team will scour the caves on the rock face and the small pools on top of the waterfall. You start up here? Yeah, we can get the ROV going too. While the water team will deploy an underwater rover and free dive the many pools and secret passages at the base of the falls. Hey, 
There she is. I didn't see any silver or gold or something like that. But check this out. Awesome. Take a look, dude. It's got the same color, same weight density, and you can see the iron. That's exactly like that other rock, man. I'd say we're in the right place, you know? First pool. Feeling really lucky right now. This is identical, minus the carving, to the rock that Brett found up on top of that pinnacle. We're in the right spot. That's what this is telling us. I'm not leaving this place till we find something. We found the evidence that's pretty compelling. All the clues seem to be lining up. The Jesuit marker outside the Santa Ana mission and brought us to the unmapped ruins where we found the Guarani marker. That led us to the special stone in Ancundai. And that pointed us here to Salta Uruguay. Come on, Megan. Wait till you see this. What is it, Meg? That looks like a Toomey. That's an Incan Toomey. Toomey knife. Check that out. <laughs> Hang on, you did it, eh? Woo! That's cool. Having found an Incan to me. I mean, we are back on the trail again. We're back on the hot trail of the Incan loop. As far as I'm concerned, that's just flat out stating that the treasure of the Trinity is here. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. We're in the right place. I'm not risking my life for nothing. This is it, man. Oh, yeah. Come on, Meg. Doubt in my mind, it's gold. Yeah. That's gold, man. It's untarnished. You know, when the only metal that uh, doesn't tarnish is gold, you know, it's inert. And so you could find some a thousand years old. It's going to look like it was made yesterday. This is a, a gold mask would have been very important during the Incan ceremony and okay. extremely symbolic. Conclusive proof that the treasure of the Trinity is made up of priceless ancient gold and silver. The mask is a representation of the Incan sun god, Inti. Inca kings ordered that all artwork depicting the sun god be made only of gold, because they considered the precious metal to be the sweat of the sun. Depending on the weight and quality of the gold, this extremely rare artifact could fetch as much as a quarter of a million dollars at auction. An Incan artifact that's actually gold is worth 
you know, 50 fold, uh, you know, something that's bronze or copper. Absolutely incredible, beautiful artifact. Wow. This sun mask is just the tip of the iceberg. And there's so many crevices and cracks. As far as I'm concerned, there's more. You know, it's just a matter of us getting in there and keep working at it. Found some more. What is it? What is it? What is it? We found the two me and three more pieces. It's like. Those are llamas. That's from the Andes. That's Inca country. All of them were in one pot. There's so many holes, so many pockets, so many boulders down there. I mean, it's. That's a good sign, man. This is it. This is it. We've been through hell and back. Snake Island to here, you yeah. know? Right? It's been a long trail. Here's to all that hard work paying off, okay? Definitely. <laughs> My adrenaline is still pumping. Everything we've been doing, the blood, sweat, tears, this just validates all of it. It validates all of it. Woo! Megan. We did it. We well, did it. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 We could finally say we tracked down the treasure of the Trinity. We've already found more here than we did in all our previous search areas combined, from Snake Island to, to Santa Ana Mission. But to locate and retrieve massive, massive Florida gold and silver artifacts in a place like this is going to take a long while, months even. And so I think it's just a matter of time. We bring in the right equipment, more manpower, and I think we're going to find the mother load. We're going to find the whole thing.